in today's chapter, we will compare standard thermodynamics with the black hole thermodynamics. Let's enjoy it! Thermodynamics is the study of the exchange of energy between systems. It is normally concerned about the relationship between different equilibrium states. Let's review the laws of thermodynamics. We will then compare the standard laws with the analog laws appearing in the black hole thermodynamics. The zero law corresponds to the thermal equilibrium between systems. Here we have three bodies, A, B and C. If A and B are in thermal equilibrium, and if B and C are also in thermal equilibrium simultaneously, then the bodies A and C are also in equilibrium. The hand of Jeffrey, for example, is in thermal equilibrium with the trophy initially, but it is also in thermal equilibrium with the iPad subsequently. Then if his hands keep the same temperature in both cases, the iPad and the trophy are also in thermal equilibrium, or equivalently would have the same temperature. The zero law in black hole thermodynamics suggests that the temperature of the event horizon is a constant along its surface. The zero law of black hole thermodynamics is very easy to prove. If we divide the event horizon in small elements, from 1 to n, the elements in direct contact with each other must be in thermal equilibrium, but this would mean that all the elements from 1 to n have the same temperature because they are contiguous elements. Then the black hole event horizon has the same temperature along its surface. The first law of thermodynamics is related to the energy conservation. Any flow of heat or water is converted to internal energy of different objects. The heat of the computer, for example, flows toward everything inside the room, including Peter and Christie. At the same time, when Christie jumps or moves, she transmits that energy to the stream below her. The computer is very hot. Transmitting my energy to the string below. The black hole energy is also conserved. Any amount of matter entering or escaping from the black hole generates changes in the area of the event horizon, in the angular momentum, and in the content of charge of the black hole. The second law of thermodynamics suggests that the change in entropy of a system plus its surroundings is always positive. There is a particle in the box. But wait a minute, what is entropy? Let's take a look at the following example. Imagine a particle inside the gift box. The particle can be in any location, but always inside the box. The number of possibilities where the particle could be is a measure of the entropy of the system. This is the case if the different options where the particle could be do not change any perceived thermodynamic property of this system. The box is open, the particle has escaped. What if we are now in a similar situation but with an open box? In such a case, the particle which was inside the box now can move freely through the whole room. The entropy increases because the number of possibilities where the particle could be also increases. This is a consequence of the second law of thermodynamics. All the processes in the nature increase the entropy. Entropy is a measure of the disorder of a system, but it could be also seen as a measure of the amount of information inside a system. In black holes, the second law of thermodynamics is connected with the evolution of the area of the event horizon. One fundamental difference between black holes and ordinary systems is the functional dependence of the entropy with the geometry. The entropy of an ordinary system increases with its volume, while the black hole entropy is proportional to the area of the event horizon. This means that all the information inside the black hole is just projected on its surface. Finally, the third law of thermodynamics says that when a system reaches the absolute zero temperature, 
then the entropy is minimal and constant. If the ground state of the system is unique, this entropy would be zero. But what is the third law of thermodynamics when we deal with black holes? In such a case, the same law suggests that there is no black hole if we have zero temperature for the system. Another difference between black holes and ordinary systems is that ordinary systems have a positive heat capacity. The heat capacity is a measure of the amount of energy which we have to input in order to increase the temperature of the system in one degree. Then, for example, we use water as a heat absorber for the engines of a car because the water has a very high heat capacity. Black holes, on the other hand, have negative heat capacity. Then when particles escape from a black hole, its temperature increases. In summary, black holes obey the same laws of thermodynamics as ordinary systems. However, the entropy of a black hole is proportional to the area of the event horizon and not to its volume, as it is the case of ordinary systems. Finally, Black holes have negative heat capacity, which means that when they absorb matter, they become colder and vice versa. If you like this video, please give us a like, share the link and subscribe to our channel. Continue with us.